for as important as vitamin D is, should testing become more regular? Is it easy to test, and should that be something that people do on a regular basis? Well, um, I used to think it's really, it was really easy to test for it and was relatively inexpensive. One of the big issues that we've had is the last two years, um, the insurance companies are refusing to pay for vitamin D tests. Mm -hmm. And because um, the labs were catching on that it was becoming a highly popular test, and the labs were actually causing, increasing the, the cost of it. So labs are making, go, going, you know, making a mint mm -hmm. with the vitamin D testing. Uh, so a normal $50 test, they were jacking up the prices to $250, $300, charging insurance companies, and all of a sudden the, vitamin, the insurance companies caught on and started refusing to pay for these tests. So now um, the insurance companies sent letters to all the providers saying, don't order these tests unless you know darn well this person has osteoporosis or they absolutely have to have this test. If they absolutely can't have it and you can't prove it and you don't give us a certain code, then we're not going to pay for it. Therefore, the, the, that charge goes back to the patient. And uh, that charge goes back to that patient. It's $250. They're not going to ever get that vitamin D test. So um, what I've tried, what I've, what I've uh, successfully done to circumvent that is um, I only use the labs that have that charge less minimum. So I have, uh, at my office at least, and hopefully other physicians are doing this as well, we have um, discounted costs for our vitamin D tests mm -hmm. out in office. And then also there are a couple labs where you can just um, do blood tests from home, mm -hmm. and they're like 60 or $70. Mm -hmm. So much better that way. Um, those tests should be done at least three, four times a year to find out if the person is getting enough vitamin D. That's a healthy person. Uh, what happens is vitamin D, if you, after summertime um, is over, if you're not taking supplemental vitamin D by mouth, your vitamin D levels start uh, dropping precipitously. Mm -hmm. And in, this, in the winter months, when we so highly need it, our levels, if they're low, that means that we're not activating it into um, um, the, more, the powerful hormone that we talked about, calcitriol. Therefore, people are going to get sick. Um, so what I try to do is at the end of summer, I check everybody's vitamin D level. Once, your vit once we know what your uh, level is, we try to keep it there on a maintenance plan with vitamin D, um, oral supplementation. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's my suggestion is three or four times a year. If you have something like cancer or MS, you might want to do it every you know, two or three months is, mm -hmm. and have a, have a physician who's open-minded or uh, someone who's knowledgeable to help mm -hmm. you. And what do, you, what do you look for in those tests? What's normal? What's optimal? Okay, so um, if you look at a normal range on a vitamin D test, it goes from, um, from 30 to over 100. Every lab's different, but 30 over 100. And uh, each lab has its own range and their, their own opinion about what is healthy and what's not. Um, the Institute of Medicine has some influence on that, of course, and uh, but uh, um, 30 is 30 is considered low. Mm -hmm. um, 40 is ex kind of acceptable. And I notice that most people, when they go to their MDs, if you're 40, they leave you alone. They'll say, "Oh, you're fine. You're at the normal range." Mm -hmm. Well, that's not healthy. Uh, it may be common, but it's not healthy. And then over 100 is considered. Um, high and possibly starting to become excessive. Hmm. And so when you are a vitamin D researcher and a clinician and you see lots of people with different diseases, all those things are, are off. Um, when you're, when you're, I try to explain it like a gas tank, but um, when, when a patient's level is 20 or uh, between 20 and 40, I tell them that they don't have any vitamin D in their bodies, uh, and not even for the most crucial of um, vitamin D needs. And the most uh, crucial need for vitamin D in your body is to rule calcium metabolism and help your kidneys. Help your kidneys and uh, uh, calcium. It'll help put calcium in your bones. So if you have osteopenia, osteoporosis, if you have a broken bone, if you're a child that's growing bone because you're growing, mm -hmm. you need more vitamin D levels than, than 20 or 30. 40 is the absolute minimum that you should have if you're someone that needs some help with their bones. 40 is the absolute minimum. 
Um, now, if you're at 40 to 50, you probably have enough between for, for, your, for your bone repair and your kidneys, but you will not have enough for your immune system. So when your levels are higher and they reach up into, um, not until they reach well over 50, so I'll say 60, 65 and over, will you have enough for your immune system. So your body cannot take uh, that which it can, um, th that which it needs for survival, mm -hmm. which is your kidney and your bone metabolism. So it will leave your immune system will not take it from your um, your stores unless your your stores are well over say 60 or so. So once your so stores are over 60, say they're 70 or 80, the research shows that that patients who have immune system issues like autoimmune disease or cancer are in higher need of vitamin D, and they will get that if their levels are stored up that high. That means that it's, 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 it's already penetrated all your fat cells in your body, and it's now floating in your bloodstream, and then when your levels are over 60, 65, um, the, the vitamin D is much more available and can be activated at that point into calcitriol, and calcitriol is the, the secosteroid hormone. So vitamin D is no longer a vitamin. Okay. once it becomes activated mm -hmm. uh, over 40, over 60. And once it becomes calcitriol, that is the hormone that your body uses for activation of your immune system. So there's a, a couple ranges there that are really important. So I try to explain to, to patients that they um, obviously want to be 40 or 50 for, for, for bone health, but if they want a good immune system and they want to fight cancers and viruses, et cetera, they want to be definitely 80-ish, 80s. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of the studies um, prior to anything I've done, um, Dr. Cannell's website, et cetera, lots of, lots of research shows that if you're a cancer patient, you want to be 100, at least 100, 90 to 110. Um, it's really hard for cancer patients to reach that level, mm -hmm. very hard. But if, they've, if, if a patient has already fought their cancer off, if they don't want recurrence, they want to be kept a, between 80 and, and 100, if mm -hmm. at all possible. Um, this is nanograms per deciliter we're talking about. Okay. And uh, so it's very different from what's in the, the ranges show mm -hmm. and from what their doctors will be telling them. Mm -hmm. Very different. Can you overdo it? Absolutely. Um, once the, most of the research shows that over 150, you can become hypercalcemic. So mm -hmm. it's uh, not a big issue. Um, um, you can possibly get some kidney. The, 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 the Institute of Medicine is mostly concerned with levels over 80, 100 because people who have kidney disease, um, they, can, they, they can get more kidney stones formed. Okay. Kidney stones can't usually kill you. Vitamin D deficiency can. Mm. That's one of the big reasons why they've wanted to keep <clears throat> the ranges low. I actually fought with them um, on NPR about two and a half, three years ago. Um, they're wanting to keep the l ranges low um, whereas I explained to the nephrologist that I was debating with, well, what kills you, cancer or kidney stones? Doesn't, you know, it's kind of obvious mm -hmm. to me. So um, they want to keep the levels up because they feel like the masses don't understand and, and they were, they're worried that the masses might give themselves kidney um, hypercalcemia, kidney mm -hmm. stones, and um, maybe some muscle, uh, muscle tetany due to the hypercalcemia, whereas um, I'm not so concerned about that because I see people on high doses of vitamin D every day. I, I've, I think I've seen two people in the last 10 years get hypercalcemia, and that's from using a um, suntan booth at the same time they were doing over 10,000 a day, and that was on their own. So mm. um, I, I, it's rarely a problem, but yes, the, uh, the, the toxicity level is about 150 or so. Mm -hmm. And at that, again, it's not a real issue. It's just you can get some muscle cramps, you can get some um, tetany muscle, muscle tightness. Mm, okay. and tetany.